All right, everybody, this is the awkward beginning of a new webcast where you don't know the exact second where things go live over at YouTube. But we are heading over live, and it looks like everything is going great. Um, we are connected. Health is good. We've got people watching this. So everything seems to be exactly what it is that I'm looking for. I'm going to take one really quick uh, click at the play button here on my uh, demo channel that I've got here. Hey, look at that. All right, everybody. Look at that, the bar, bad part of me, uh, here we go, I'm going to do that, uh, because that's what I need to do to um, keep that from happening. So, we have ourselves a fun little day today, uh, we should be having some uh, some good times here, and um, looking forward to sharing with you guys, um, you know, my, my passion here of, of podcasting and YouTube and live casting and all the fun things that come together here. Um, I had one screen set up here that looks like it's acting a little bit wonky once I hit the refresh. Um, I'm just gonna hit the refresh one more time here and that will give us exactly what we're looking for. I can hit pause there, bring that back, and then give everybody what we're looking for. Yes, because what I'm looking for here is this one. Look at that. What we've got now is we've got a special interaction where you can see um, the chat that's coming through. This is the first time I've ever done this. And so as people ask questions in here, um, I think we'll have a good time and we'll interact. So Michael wanted to know, well, first of all, um, Robert wanted to know about Patreon. Um, Robert, I added a slide specifically about Patreon for you. Michael wanted to know, he's in the UK, can he go to sleep and catch this in the morning? Yes, you can. Um, Saturday Morning Media says they can't wait. Well, Saturday Morning Media, you don't have to wait anymore. And Zen Runner says, looks good, Paul. So thank you very much. With that said and done, let's get to the presentation, shall we? we got a lot to cover. There are only four profitable podcast monetization models. Which one is yours? Yes, that's it. That's all the more complicated it is. There's only four models out there in the podcast monetization world. And some of us tend to get a little um, overexcited with there's a thousand different ways. And, and, and there might be a thousand different ways, but there's four different models. And if we figure out what those four different models are, some of this will begin to make a lot more sense, which is exactly what we're looking for and exactly what we need. So the interaction rules for today's podcast. Please post comments. One of the things I'm doing here is I've got um, a screen running of the comments that you all are making. Please post comments. These are good. These are interactive. This helps. Um, I don't want to go with a third-party system because what happens with a third-party system is... Um, um, a, a whole bunch of other problems. And um, I just don't want to go there. So um, post comments, reply to each other. Some people in here um, know each other. Some people don't know each other. Reply to each other. I'm not the only one. I'm not going to be typing in comments during this presentation because that really doesn't do well for me. And then um, the last one is ask complete questions. Now, here's a really, really good question. Daniel Perry wants to know, you're using Wirecast. What version? I'm using Wirecast Play. I'm using the updated version. But sometimes what happens is, is we get excited when we do a live cast and, and we ask, uh, could you say that again? Or what did you mean by that? Or could you give me an example or that type of thing? The problem is when you do that, I don't necessarily look at the questions all the time. And then I don't know what the question was and none of us do well. And it starts to look a little silly. So post comments, reply to each other, ask complete questions, and we will go from there. A bunch of you are joining on board. Thank you so much. Always exciting to have you here. So a couple things. Um, I've been doing a lot of things in this month, and I want to round it out before you see you know what's going on. Podcastmonth.com has been a little program I've been doing where what it is is it's basically every day in the month of September I've been giving away a gift to podcasters. Now, today's the 30th. Today's the last day. I will be closing this down fairly soon, um, sometime tomorrow when I wake up from all this. But if you still want to get the goodies, uh, get yourself in on that list right now. Um, the book is over at Noise Trade today. I don't know if you know this, but um, Noise Trade is a website that lets you do, um, most people think of it as music. And what happens is, is you, you know, you free albums from thousands of artists who'd love to meet you. Well, they have a whole book ver uh, edition, a book area, a book group. And so what you can do here is you list books and you go to business and finance. And look at that. The number one book right now is How to Podcast 2015. And what you can do, man, is um, you can click on this and you can download the ebook. And you can download the ebook in... Uh, the PDF, the EPUB, or the Mobi version, which is very, very, very cool. And um, if you'd like to give it some promotion in social media, I would appreciate that as well. But that's what the book at, at Noise Trade is. If you are watching the recording of this after, um, you know, podcast month is going to close down, 
and the noise trade offer is going to close down. I'm going to get back to my um, uh, business life, if you will. If you want to grab my podcast book, head out to grabthebook.com. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty cheap in Amazon right now. And um, if you want to get the paperback edition of it, you can do that one as well. But that's there for you. Uh, podcast cart. A lot of you have been asking me about what podcast cart is. Podcast cart is my new e-commerce platform that lets you do um, e-commerce for podcasters. Um, all the lists for podcast month and grabthebook.com and everything I've been doing is being run through podcast cart. That's what that is. And then finally, the podcast report is my podcast about podcasts. And a lot of you listen to it. A lot of you are on this as a result of that. Thank you so much. Let's go back to our questions here. Um, Daniel, our, our Zen just says, very generous gifts. Thank you, man. No problem, Zen. Um, podcast, make me proud, would you? All right, let's go back to our slides. So that's everything that we're giving away. Now to the content. Who knows deep in your gut that there has to be a better way to monetize? I would love to get your comments here on the webcast. Um, if you know that there just has to be a better way to monetize, I'd love to hear about that inside of the chat for this uh, webcast. I know that there's a bit of a delay from when I talk and when you can chat in the chat. I would um, love to do that. By the way, one last thing for chat. If you happen to be watching this over at my blog here, um, if you click on this link inside of YouTube, that will take you over to the YouTube page that has the questions and whatnot, which I guess we'll see here. So you can see here that um, questions are asked. Actually, it happens right here. That's that's what that is. So I um, wanted to give that to you. Okay. Let's go back to our keynotes. So we know there's got to be a better way to monetize. And a number of us honestly would quit our day jobs if we could actually get our podcast to pay the bills. So we know deep in our gut there's a better way to monetize. We would quit our day jobs if we could. Um, this should obviously help us think some things through and give us some incentive to, to do more, hence the reason for this episode or hence the reason for this podcast, this webcast. Um, if you're confused with all the options, that's okay. A lot of us are confused with the options. Um, a lot of people have made a lot of noise and a lot of craziness. And instead of order, they've created chaos. And I am sorry for that. I've, I've been trying for a long time to help others understand what the reality of all this is. And um, today, you know, chaos is not going to reign. Um, order is going to reign. And that is the goal for today. So um, hopefully we'll get there. Let me know if you did. And again, you can go ahead and make comments accordingly. Now, I found this slide. This is really, really interesting. You know, Quora, I don't know if you know what Quora is, but it's a website where people can ask the world questions, if you will. And then uh, different people follow it and answer questions and kind of try to show off what they know. It's it, it's an interesting play. Uh, but what's interesting here is on, you know, November 2013, so less than two years ago, somebody actually asked, will TV series replace movies in the long run? Okay. Two years ago, somebody wanted to know if TV is going to replace movies. It's not going to happen. They are different entities. And you don't treat TVs like movies. You don't treat movies like TVs. And one of the things that has happened that I think is pretty crazy is, is we tend to, podcasters tend to treat podcasting like radio and think that everything's about the advertising. Think about everything's about the, the traditional ad insertion. And, and I'm going to tell you, that's one of the options, but it's not necessarily the only one. And we have, we have better options out there to take. We really, really do. So the fact that people are still asking this should make you laugh. Okay, flat, failing to plan is planning to fail. Um, it's just math. Content's always going to be better than tech. There are a number of us who put up a podcast and then say, hey, now I'm podcasting. Where's the money coming from? You know, there's this idea, podcast your, your passions and the profits will follow. You know, and, 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 and the problem is, is it's just math. Um, the tech is easy. The, the content is going to be better. Um, the content has to be better than the tech. And if you don't plan, it isn't going to come together. Now, some of this involves selling. And um, I've put up a video at my blog uh, for my buddy Joe Polish is selling evil. You can also find this at YouTube. If you have a problem with selling, um, that's not what this episode's about. I don't want to answer questions about it. But if you have a problem with selling, uh, go ahead and take a look at the is selling evil video. That will help you out a lot. So, about me. Um, I was one of the first podcasters ever. I got in in the very, very early days. Um, I had fun. I loved doing it. Couldn't be more proud. You know, they say one step ahead, you're a visionary. Two steps ahead, you're a martyr. The problem is, is many times I was three or four steps ahead. But being three, four steps ahead instead of podcasting, I can't tell you this. I was one of the first. I got four books out about podcasting. Three of them are top sellers. 
Um, 2016 edition of my books coming out soon. Five more books about online media, eight international bestsellers. I've got the podcast report. And I think the thing that's really important is podcasting is my day job. Um, I monetize my podcast. Now, it's not with ad insertions from GoDaddy or anything like that. But this is my day job. And I've got some stuff to show you. And I've got some stuff to teach you. So, first now, I am a big fan of podcasting. And this is really, really important. Because if, 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 if we don't have that, we've got nothing here. I'm not just in this for the money. I'm not just in this to, to capitalize and, and, and take on the latest trend as some get worried, but the fact of the matter is I am a big, huge fan. Now, let me tell you some stories here. Whoa, look at that. One story of why I love podcasting. This is one of my absolute favorites. This one is near and dear to my heart. Now, this picture um, is a screen grab of Oprah. Um, Oprah Winfrey, don't know if you remember her, um, big impact in media. Um, Oprah Winfrey, you got on Oprah, you did well. You know, she could make books a number one bestseller. She could do amazing things. Uh, she's still out there in the industry doing well. Doesn't have the show with the impact, but Mignon Fogarty, which you can see here and you can look up this video. Uh, Mignon was a very popular podcaster very, very quickly. Now, the cool thing is she realized that her first version of her podcast wasn't going to work, and she quickly regrouped and did her second version, which I think is a lesson for all of us. But what happened with Mignon, sorry about that noise there. Um, what happened with Mignon was Mignon got a book contract very, very quickly, very, very early, did very, very well. But then awkwardly what happened was she got asked on Oprah sooner than she was able to get her book out the door. So there's this thing where you're supposed to get your book out the door and then go on Oprah. And unfortunately what happened was um, she got on Oprah before the book was out the door. So what do you do? Um, how do you handle that? Well, Mignon continues to be one of the classiest people in podcasting. She handled it tremendously well. What's interesting here uh, is if you look at her Wikipedia page here, you'll notice that she appeared on March 26, 2007 on the Oprah Winfrey Show. Now, I've got a page here from um, Amazon, a, a clip from Amazon. You'll notice the Grammar Girl got an audio book out on March 23, 2007. Um, that's just three days before she got herself on Oprah, at least before the Oprah broadcast went. Now, how the heck did she pull that off? What the heck was that about? Well, here's the thing. All it was was the recording of the first five episode, five or so episodes of her show. That's it. That's all they had. She was getting ready for media training. She was getting outfits. She was getting all that stuff. Somebody else put this thing together. Somebody got this up. And then after being on Oprah's show, she was the top book, audio book in iTunes for months. The gal killed it, taking her existing content took what she already had and sees a revenue stream from it. And it continues to run this day. And, and we'll go back to this slide because I've got some more interesting stuff for you. But um, she did incredibly well. These are the types of stories in podcasting we need to tell. Someone who gets a, a gig for, you know, some big advertising company, the first person to do Chipotle or something like that, I don't really care about. But models like what, what Mignon did here are, are really, really exciting and really, really um, just important for all of us. So here's the numbers. Um, she's been selling this book for 3,114 days. You know, so many podcasters, so many of us um, go out and we, you know, we do the news of the week and, and this type of thing. And, you know, she took a piece of evergreen content and she made it a book and it's been on sale for over 3,000 days. That's incredible if you think about it. Uh, begins to, to open up the mind of some of the things we can do in podcast monetization, or at least, at least I hope it does. So... Um, interaction rules again. A number of you have joined us since we grabbed this, since we joined on to here. Uh, please post comments. Uh, do it inside of YouTube. And um, what I can do here is I'll show you exactly where to do that. We'll click on this. We'll uh, close that over here. Over here, you can make comments. I'm over here on the right-hand side, which would love to have you make comments. And then what I'll do on the comments is um, we'll read them off here, and then we'll have some fun with that. So, so definitely make comments. Let's definitely have some fun with that. Um, reply to each other. A lot of times I don't get the chance, you know, I'm not going to go in and I'm not going to type the things that you guys are putting right there. Um, I'm going to respond to you in here, but but somebody might feel really comfortable responding to somebody else and answering. We got a little community here. Uh, but then the last thing is just please ask complete questions. When someone says repeat that or something like that, I don't necessarily see when the question comes up and um, it goes from there. So treating podcasts like old media is like faxing me your email. This is huge. Um, a lot of us, 
uh, uh, sadly, way too many of us in the podcasting space tend to treat podcasts like old media. Um, what we do is we think traditional ad inserts, we think traditional marketing, we think traditional numbers. And the thing is, we, we got to get bigger than that. Um, it is bigger than that. It's most important than that. Um, podcast monetization, the digital solutions pack. Um, we got the webcast. You guys are welcome to the webcast. I'm going to make a squeaky noise here. Sorry about that. Um, you, um, I've got some options for you to grab the monetization uh, solutions pack, which grabs a bunch of other things. Um, to grab this, you can either, uh, you can text your email to 503-360-1554. Um, if you are doing this um, a day or so after podcast day, um, you can also send up at podcasttools.com. That'll get it to you as well. But go ahead and just text your email to uh, 503-360-1554, and that'll get you the monetization digital solutions pack, uh, which will be the slides from this presentation. Um, calculators. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through running the numbers. I'm going to get you calculators for all of these. I got you a link to the selling is ease selling evil video. I've got a sample pack of music from legal podcast music for you. And then I've got a couple of replays for other webinars and webcasts that we've done, which are um, pretty valuable. So go ahead and take that. Um, again, text your email to 503-360-1554 and uh, to get that package. If you are doing the whole um, replay thing, and again, it's interesting, you know, over 6,800 people downloaded uh, streamed last year's one after the live event. So I expect more people to listen to this in the replay than otherwise. Um, we will get that to you as well. Uh, a couple questions are coming in chat. Let's go ahead and set, set those up here. Um, Saturday Morning Media. We were doing the Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd, put out the episodes on CD and got them via CD Baby into iTunes, Amazon, etc. I remember Dr. Floyd. Good job, guys. Yeah, you took your content, you sold them. When we were doing the radio, we were getting over $100 every two months from that even, uh, though our episodes are available for free on the podcast. Exactly. Um, they took an existing show. They made it available some other way. They sold it. They made money there. And then we still get over $100 every two months from that, even though our episodes are available for free on the podcast. Well, I guess you just typed the same thing twice there. Yes. Yes, exactly. Very, very cool. And um, um, these are the types of models that we want to play with. So let's definitely do more of this. All right. <sighs> fun to do live, fun to interact. Um, today, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at the money in each. Well, we're going to go through each model, obviously. But we're going to look at the money, where the money is in each one of these models. And then we're going to take a look at the tools and the steps to proceed in each one of these models. So that's sort of our, our process for today. So number one model is pre-selling your show. And this is an interesting model because it's not the type of thing that a lot of people think through. It's not the type of thing that a lot of people think of when they think of podcasting. And the idea here basically is really simple. It's take the coming show and pre-sell it to somebody else. Now, this could be a number of ways. This could be a limited series that you do for somebody in exchange for you know a financial uh, reimbursement. Some people have leveraged their podcast to get jobs and to get gigs, um, jobs and gigs that maybe uh, support their podcasting efforts so that they can play more fun with podcasting. The, the idea is just really, it's, it, it's a one-for-one -one transaction. I will do the show for X. Um, this is a model that is, is really viable and really real, and not a lot of people do it. Um, the calculator for this type of thing is really, really easy. And again, if you if you follow through, you can get all these calculators and a video that shows you how to do them. Um, what you do is you just basically calculate how many hours were spent pre-selling this. Now, this is really important because you got to learn how to podcast. You got to learn how to um, position yourself, sell yourself, look good, be good in iTunes and whatnot. How many hours are you going to spend pre-selling it? And then, of course, once you pre-sell the podcast, how many hours are you going to spend actually producing the podcast? And then our calculator, you know, once you add what your net profit is after expenses, you can figure out how much you make per hour doing this. Now, for some people, you look at $16 an hour and go, no way I'm doing this for $16. Others look at something like $16 and say, you know, $16 to do what I love is absolutely phenomenal. Um, either way, that's the pre-sell your show model. It's, it's, it's not that complicated. I got the calculator for you. Now, what do you need to pre-sell your show? Um, it's just math. Again, if you want to get the calculators, go ahead and text 503-360-1554. Uh, the tools needed to pre-sell your, so your show is really just negotiation skills. you got to be able to sell yourself to somebody who's going to buy the podcast and buy what it is that you've got for them. Then you need the time. And then to be honest, what you're going to need is you're going to need a plan B because these things tend to be rather limited in space. And so it's the type of thing where um, you got to know what's next. But that's okay. Um, you know, it's a set to get going, it's a set to put it together, it's a set for the money, and then you run the calculator and it's it's a pretty cool place to be. 
So that is the pre-selling your show model. Nice, simple, easy. Let's take a look at the next model. Um, oh, I want to remind everybody, interaction rules. Just post comments um, here in YouTube. Always fun to interact. Reply to each other. And when you do that, ask complete comments. Um, ask complete questions. This way I can help you out and assist with it. Um, model two, sell someone else. Now, this is what a lot of people are doing. The idea here is that um, I got nothing to sell you. Um, I'm not in this to sell. I'm, I'm in this to entertain. And you're going to bring somebody out from the outside and you're going to sell them. And that's done usually with ads. Now, again, I'm going to say the treating podcast like old media is like faxing me your email because um, this isn't necessarily the, the best connection out there. Because, you know, if you've got a show, you know, we, we all we have good old Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd here. You know, um, th that was a very targeted show to a very specific audience, kids, families, great stuff. You know, if you were selling, you know, um, domain names, which a lot of people are saying on their podcast, why would they do that? Um, you, you know, um, securities, you, you know, running your portfolios, that kind of stuff. Why would they do that? And so there are, um, yeah, um, we'll keep going. I, I don't want to belittle through this. And I don't want to go through this. Oops, sorry about that. Um, here's the thing. Here's the number that you want to take a look at is um, these numbers come from Rob Walsh over at Libsyn. And here's the thing, okay? The median of all podcasts gets 160 downloads per episode. Now, if you don't know Libsyn, Libsyn is the default hosting. They host such a huge, absolute chunk of podcasting. The numbers that come from these guys is phenomenal. And the median of all podcasters is 160 downloads per episode. Now, they use medium instead of uh, middle because you got crazy people like um, Mark Maron and stuff doing millions. You know, So they take some of the top and the low, get an average going. But the average podcaster is only getting about 160 downloads per episode. Only the top 20% of all their podcasters are getting more than 1,290. Only the top 10 are getting more than 3,500. Uh, five in the seven, nine, the top five, 9,000, and the top 1%, only the top 1%, you know, are getting 42,000 or more. So you got to be better than the top 5% of all podcasts to get more than 5,000 downloads per episode. Um, this is important. I, I, I know you got it in you. I, I know you're there, but you need to be realistic about this because advertising is sold in how many downloads you get. So let's say you're a top 10 show. You got 3,500 downloads. Well, let's do the math on this, okay? The calculator here, all right? Downloads per month that count. You know, 4,000 downloads that count. Uh, $40 per thousand is your, um, that should be CPM, sorry about that, um, per thousand downloads, hours spent per month, take per hour of, of $2 per hour. Um, you know, yeah, if you could get 10,000, you know, downloads, that would go up to five per hour. But the numbers here, when you compare them to the numbers of what's really happening in podcasting, you know, from, from Rick, you know, from Rob here, you know, if you have a top 20 show, you know, those numbers are even less than the 4,000 cuts in half. You're making less than a buck an hour. And this is really, really important. It's something that you really, really definitely, definitely need to think through. So um, that's the calculator for that one. And really, it's just math. Um, I wish you could get a trillion download, thousand downloads. I wish you could strike it rich on $20, you know, per thousand download CPM models. But that just isn't how it works. And I'm sorry about that, but that's just the way that it is. Wish we were better. So um, the tools needed to do this kind of thing, you need a massive audience. You need a huge, massive audience because you got to get tens of thousands of downloads for this to make any real numbers. You got to get a first-class network um, that's able to provide all these things, do the insertion, that type of thing. And then you're going to need more proof than you traditionally have. You're going to have to team with somebody to, to show those kind of numbers are real. Once people start paying real money, you know, they want to see real numbers. So Libsyn's really good with that. Uh, Blueberry's really good with that. Uh, Spreaker's uh, trying to get there. Um, we'll see what happens. But those are the tools needed to pull something like this off. So before we hit model three, we've got a couple of comments here from the chats. Let's hit those. Um, a bridge too far. Happy International Podcast Day for next year. We're going to expand and celebrate the 30th of September as International Content Creation Day. Um, or, or, or that's a question. I, I don't know. Um, per personally, I, I, I hope they clean it up. Um, it, it got a little too internal. Um, Zen Runner says, I always wonder why podcasters pimp Audible which takes time and attention listeners away from their podcasters. Audible knows it's their Achilles heel. Oh, I could tell you stories about um, the inside of, of, of that world. But yeah, 
Um, yeah, and an and interesting thought. Um, thank you for that. All right, let's go to Model 3. Model 3 is one of my favorites. Model 3 is, is basically just selling your own content. Um, this is where you own it. This is what uh, Grammar Girl did, and this is what some others have done. And let's walk through some of the options for this. Now, um, at the time I record this, this weekend, uh, the movie The Martian's coming out. A lot of people don't know that The Martian um, came from a book by a, um, a guy named, oh my goodness, it's escaping me. It'll come to me in a second. Um, a really, really, really good book. He did an interview on the Authorpreneur podcast. What was interesting was when he did the show, the show came from, um, I'm sorry, when he did his book, it came from a blog. He was writing his book as a blog, blog post one after another, chapter after another. And then his friends came and said, hey, could you put this in an ebook so that we don't have to read it at the blog? You know, they want to take it on their, you know, iPad or, or portable device or whatever it is. And so he put it up as an ebook um, and he figured out how to do Andy Weir. Thank you, Zen. Um, and he put it up as an ebook. And then what happened was um, people said, well, can you put it on Kindle? And he said, yeah, I, I put it on Kindle. People got to pay 99 cents. And, I, and I'm just giving this away to my friends. So here's a guy reticent to sell his own content. He says, I don't want to put it up at Kindle because people are going to have to pay for it. And lo and behold, he puts it up at Kindle. And bam, he's a huge bestseller, book contract, movie contract. Um, absolutely phenomenal stuff. Now, when asked about this, here's what he said. When I first posted it to Kindle, pretty much all of them, all of my regular readers went and bought a copy, even if they had already read. Now think about this. His fans, his friends, the people who liked him already had the book, already read it, already had an ebook version. They asked him to put it up at Amazon and he did and they bought it anyway. We have here in the notes, Dr. Floyd. They could have got it as a radio show. He sold the CDs. They bought it anyway. Um, this is a model. People will pay for content otherwise. All right. Let's go to our next slide. Evergreen content is almost always a better monetization strategy. If your show changes every week and is dead every week, um, you can't do this stuff. I mean, Radio Floyd's still making money every month from their old shows. Good job, guys. Um, you, you know, Grammar Girl's still making money from her old, old, her old show. Good job, guys. And he's still making crazy money uh, from his book. Good job, guys. Um, when you look at podcasting, um, consider evergreen content. It's something you want to take a look at. Comic Girl 19. Now, I don't know Comic Girl, Girl 19 at all. She's a YouTuber, um, not my demographic. Usually pink hair is kind of where I'm, I'm not out of. Um, but what happened was, you, you know, if you look at her numbers, she's got 374,000 subscribers. She's got 24 million plus views. And, and I took this slide shot uh, about a month and a half ago. So she's probably got more. She is in the position of what everybody would call, you, you know, you know, really strategic YouTuber. I mean, she's going to do well on the ad. She's got those crazy numbers that I spoke to earlier. But what's interesting about Comic Book Girl 19 is uh, she's done some video on demand stuff. And she's done video on demand stuff outside of YouTube. She actually did it over at um, Vimeo. And, and you can see here this house bear, bear Theon. Um, her video on demand, this video on demand, this one $2 product made her more money than all of her ads the previous year at YouTube. One video on demand, her own content, she sold her own content, made her more money than the ads did. I think this is really important stuff. These are the types of things that podcasters need to think about. Now, I don't know this girl, but boy, she sounds smart. This gal, this lady, don't want to be sexist. YouTube's never been our end game. We've always planned our fitting that audience into that new wave of cyber patronage. Um, selling yourself makes a lot of sense and, and the money is better. One video does better than all the ads. And this is a gal who's doing really, really, really good ads. You know, if we go back here to Grammar Girl, it's the same exact, you know, she took her existing content. She made it a book, 3,000 plus days of selling your own content. This is really, really good stuff. So here's the calculator for the, for selling your own content. The profit for sale is 15 bucks. Or, or, or you know, you put in the profit for sale. You figure out how much you're going to sell. You figure out about how many hours you're going to do on it. And then you take a look at the money. Now, this starts to get interesting. And again, I plugged in these numbers. And again, um, if you follow up per, and I've got it on pretty much every other slide, um, if you sign up for the list, you can get the calculators and you can plug these all in for yourself and figure out what this means to you. So these aren't the only way it works, obviously. You know, you, you got to figure out where these things are. I, I tend, I like actually to sell products of considerably higher cost and, and the number does better. But that, that's the calculator for Model 3 of selling your own content. Again, it's just math. And again, if you want to get these calculators, go ahead and text your email to 503-360-1554. Now, the tools needed to sell yourself, A, you got to have content worth selling. This is really, really important. 
um, a lot of people um, forget that they got to have so many people want to buy. Um, the Martian, fantastic. Grammar Girl, fantastic. Dr. Floyd, fantastic. Your stuff has to be fantastic. But if it's your passion, and if it's what you're doing, and if it's what you're going, and imagine being able to spend your time honing your craft and getting better as opposed to actually just doing your thing every week and hoping to get an ad from Audible or something like that. Got to have content worth selling. You got to have elegant e-commerce. You need a way to sell your own stuff. Now, Saturday Morning Media here spoke to going through CD Baby. CD Baby is a great model. CD Baby takes a, takes a chunk of it, takes a big chunk of it. Um, you know, not necessarily bad because then you're through iTunes and, and, and Amazon and all those other places. But, you know, you want to think through that process. A good e-commerce system, you know, what if, uh, what if Dr. Floyd printed their own CDs at a buck a pop, sold them at 15 for their own system? How much more money would that make? And would that pay for their own thing? Uh, the Podcast Day t-shirts, you know, um, they went through Teespring for this. Uh, what if you got them printed and ran them through your own e-commerce? And it's got to be a better e-commerce system. We'll, we'll chat a bit to Elegant E-commerce. But basically, you need affiliates, you need upsells, you need the ability to do, do the full engine. And once you do that, you're at a really, really good place. There we go again with the slides. Um, interaction rules, a couple of you have joined us. Just post comments, reply to each other, ask complete questions. Um, model four is selling yourself. Now, this is the one that a lot of people don't think about. This is where you go above and beyond the call of duty and actually um, expectation and, and really strategically leverage what it is that you have to sell more than just your content. Um, you start to sell packages. You start to sell things. Let's look at some examples. So um, I was asked here by, um, who was it in chat? Let's pull them up here. Um, da, da, da. Robert Miller wanted to know about Patreon. Hey, Robert, I heard you, and we added this slide for you. You know, you know, Patreon is is one model because what you can do with Patreon is you can, um, you know, let people not just invest in the show or invest in the content, but invest in you. Um, I've played with Patreon. I've done a really lousy job of dabbling inside of Patreon. Um, it's not the model for me. Actually, let's let's take a look here. Let let's do this. Let's look at um, Tom Merritt Patreon. Tom's killing it at Patreon. Look at this. Tom, bam, $15,967 a month. You go, Tom. So there are some doing well inside of the Patreon model. Um, Tom has, as you can see, nearly 5,000 patrons who love him, who adore him, who are doing great things with him. And um, they pay for him to create the Daily Tech News Show. I've met Tom. He's a great guy. I've always liked his work. And, you know, he's got an audience. And they're not just investing in the content. This is a Daily Tech News Show, guys. Um, it's not like people are getting the CDs of what happened in 2015. Uh, but they love Tom. They love him entirely. And, um, you, you know, they do this. And you look at the ways. You know, he's got 2,600 people pledging a buck or more. He's got, you know, 1,214 pledging five or more. He's got 290 pledging 10 or more. He's got 37 people pledging 20 or more. I mean, this is a really, really interesting model. And I wanted to make sure that, you know, um, my little uh, pathetic Patreon experiment isn't the only thing that we're talking about. But Patreon's definitely a model for selling yourself. Um, now, what's interesting about selling yourself, and this is the Edison Research, which is, is fantastic. These guys I trust. I don't always trust researchers and people who... Um, reports and case studies and that kind of stuff. I, I trust Edison. Um, I trust them, period. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this slide. I'm going to take my face off here, which I probably should be doing more of. Um, and you're going to see the slide. Um, have you used or listened to podcasts? And, and this is this year. And look at this. The more money they make, the more likely they are to listen to podcasts. The more money they make, the more likely they are to listen to podcasts. The more money they make, the more likely they are to listen to podcasts. Um, if they make over $100,000 a year, they're more likely to listen to podcasts than not be listening to podcasts. Think about this. Um, you want to sell to the demographic who can buy and the wealthier can buy, the wealthier can pay more. And, and that is a demographic that really, really enjoys podcasting. So this is a really, really good idea. Something to think about. Um, you know, 100K, more than half of them in the last month, more than a quarter of them in the last week, more than 16% of them in the last day. Uh, phenomenal numbers here. If you're going to sell yourself, this is the audience to do it to. 
Now, this is a page from Gimlet Media. Um, I don't know if you know Gimlet. Gimlet were the guys who did um, um, a startup, and they did a couple other podcasts. Um, what they did was they realized uh, on an episode of their show, it was kind of funny, they basically went out and said, look, um, you know, good news is 1.5 million in advertising. Good new bad news is 1.6 million in expenses. So they had to do something else. Um, even though they're selling ads, even though they're doing other things, uh, they've opened up membership. You know, they're selling themselves out of Gimlet. I bought, I bought the t-shirt, not the highest quality t-shirt. I wish it would have been higher quality. But the fact of the matter is, um, it's there. I paid my 60 bucks and we're doing there. Um, another model for you to take a look at. Uh, Screencast Online, good old Don McAllister. Um, Don started in podcasting, what he realized, and is, um, he, you know, he takes his content now and he sells it at a membership site. He takes that same content, he sells it in an online magazine uh, using the magcasting platform. And then he even takes some of his content and he sells them as apps. Uh, there are different ways to take and package up your content. We take another comment here from the... Uh, you know, you know, from the chat room, the guys from Dr. Floyd, you know, they sold CDs through their website as well. They sell t-shirts, glow-in-the-dark secret decoder rings. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that's awesome. This is the kind of stuff that does better money than ad inserts. Zen says, uh, glow-in-the-dark decoder rings, classic. Where did you get them produced? Um, you guys can go back and forth and chat about that in there, but I thought I would, uh, I thought I would bring that up. But lots of options for selling yourself, you know, and they're just a lot more exciting than, you know, selling Audible ads or something like that. Um, in the podcast report, episode 56 and 55, I've got some ideas about buying and selling product. If you want to go deeper in that, um, I would definitely, definitely recommend that. Um, the other thing you want to chat about is, is affiliate marketing. And affiliate marketing is, well, it's another great reason for those who know, like, and trust you to tell others about you. Um, affiliate marketing is essentially, in a nutshell, affiliate marketing is paid online commission sales. And basically, if you, well, podcast cart, the system that I use to um, do the email and the e-commerce, it has an affiliate program. And uh, if you buy it from me, I, I make you know a chunk of change. Um, if you buy it through the recommendation of somebody else and that person's set up with the affiliate program, th then they get a piece of the action. You know, the thing is, it's fair for them to get a piece of the action. They introduce podcaster cart to you, not me. You know, and that's affiliate marketing. And I've always loved affiliate marketing. It's been a big, big part of what I've been doing on the internet for a long time. And the great thing about affiliate marketing is you know, to get people who know, like, and trust you, they might, might start promoting. I mean, instead of Dr. Floyd selling their decoder rings at their website, maybe kids are selling Dr. Floyd decoder rings at their website. Now, you got to think through the numbers. As I've said, it's just math. you got to make sure the profit's there. you got to make sure fraud and all these things are there. But if you get yourself an elegant e-commerce system in place, um, it really, really becomes interesting. And boy, you know, think about people who know, like, and trust you. Here's Pottertainment Magazine. Um, Gary Leland's um, venture, if you will. I have no part in this, yet he's selling my podcast book over here in the right-hand corner. Why is he selling my podcast book? Because he gets a piece of the action for selling my podcast book. So now, people who don't know about me, people who haven't heard of me, go to Pottertainment Magazine, find out about the book, buy the book, get inside of my mailing list. Gary gets a little bit of the money. It's all good. This is the type of stuff that we need to see more of. So the calculator for selling yourself is simple. What's your profit for sale? And when you sell yourself, you can do either more in volume or you can do more in the money. The amount sold per month, the hour spent doing that, and then what it begins to take per hour. This is where it starts to get interesting. What if you became a high-paid consultant? What if you had high-level training programs? What if these types of things? You run this model and it starts to get really, really, really interesting. Um, again, it's just math. Um, if you want to get a copy of these, text your email to 503-360-1554. Uh, the tools needed to sell yourself is you got to have a tremendous value to your audience. Um, you've got to be worth it. You know, you're not going to shyster people into paying for this stuff. You got to be worth it. Um, you got to have elegant e-commerce with affiliates and upsells. Um, that's part of the system. Just having a PayPal button is not going to be enough. Uh, you got to have something that tracks inventory and tracks couponing. And don't you want to know, you do 10 episodes of your show, people join your mail list from all 10 episodes. Do you want to know which episode it was that got you the buyers so you can do more episodes like that? That's what you need if you're going to be really committed to selling yourself. And you just need an elegant e-commerce system, which is really, really important. Um, the interaction rules. Um, you guys have been doing a great job with this. Post your comments, reply to each other, ask complete questions. Appreciate that. So where do you go from here? The first thing we're going to do from here is uh, take a look at a couple of comments that came in. Um, Zen said... Uh, I've done okay with affiliate marketing with very 
low investment over the years, but it doesn't really help you grow. It helps those you market instead. Selling yourself is the way to go. Exactly, Zen Runner. See, here's the thing. You don't want to be the person who's marketing somebody else. You want to be the person that somebody else is marketing. See how this goes? Where are you going to find these people? Or are you going to find them in your podcast? Because if you build a, a podcast of people who know, like, and trust you, why aren't they going to rep you, especially if you give them a piece of the action? So yes, affiliate marketing really goes back in that model too, selling somebody else kind of thing. You know, and it's a nice way to get started and, you know, beer money and that kind of thing. But if you're serious about monetizing, this is a really interesting play. Um, it's a really exciting one. But again, you need the elegant e-commerce. You got to have a you got to have a thing, you know, that's going to cover this kind of stuff. You're not going to be able to do um any com well, I don't even think PayPal allows affiliates right now if I'm I'm mistaken. They they keep going back and forth. Um, you need a system. Obviously, you know, I'd love you to have mine, but the fact of the matter is you need an elegant e-commerce system, a system that makes all of these things possible. Pull that off and you're in a really good place. So where do you go from here? Okay. First thing, always remember to plan ahead. All right. Love this slide. Um, you got to think this thing through. You've got to not fire aim ready but you have to ready, aim, fire. You got to think through this process. Some of you are going, oh, hey, I'm model two, but I like model four. Or, oh, I realize I'm really model three and I can get better at that. Some of you realize you got to change. The big thing is just plan. The big thing is just work this through and uh, plan this stuff ahead. Embrace the math of all of these models. Um, the math here is good and you've got access to calculators that's going to make this possible for you to go through yourself. So the first step is just embrace the math. Um, embrace the math of how many downloads you're going to get. Embrace the math of what the money is. Embrace the math of the calculators. And then just build a system based on that. And you'll be at a much better place. Then pick a model. There are only four. Well, you can go back. Go back to this YouTube page. Watch them again. If you, if you text in your email address, you get the slides. Pick a model. That's easy. Run the numbers. Run what you would do across all four models and figure out which one makes the most sense to you. And you'll be at a, you know, you'll be at a pretty cool place. And then change if needed. You know, pick a model. Run the numbers change if needed. Pick a model, run the numbers, change if needed. You know, one of the things that happens here is, oh, I really, really want to sell ads. Okay. No problem. You can sell ads. $40 per thousand downloads. How many downloads are you going to do? How much time are you going to spend on this? You're only going to make X amount of bucks an hour, and it's going to be pretty small. If you're happy with that, if it's a hobby and it's giving you a bit of beer money, great, run with it. But if it's not and you need to change, you know, get ready for the change. Plan for it, calculate for it, do that stuff. Um, Zen Runner here mentioned that um, Zen Runner means that runners need decoder rings. I, I think that's fascinating, but I, I simply like the fact that Zen Runner here is is thinking these things through and, and going bigger. Now, the first thing I do, Zen, is I would go to your audience and I would ask your audience, um, do... You, would you buy a decoder ring? If we had a special Zen Runner decoder ring, um, would that work for you? Would that be part of, of who you are as a runner? Um, you know, here's the cool thing. You, your results are going to be very interesting. You're going to get a lot of yeses, or you're going to get a lot of noes, or you're going to get a lot of maybes, and you're going to begin to run the numbers because this stuff is just math. And then change this thing if needed because that's what we need to do. Now, guys, uh, feel free to put more questions in here because I would love to answer them. And um, I'll go until we're done here. I'm not a ton of slides left. I just wanted to present this, but I'll certainly answer any questions that are in the uh, queue. Execute to plan. Um, this is important. You know, if you have to have a $2,000 product to make this work, you got to produce a $2,000 product. It's not going to come from thin air. Um, if you're going to have stuff that people are going to buy, content that people are going to buy, you got to practice and get good and find the type of content that people will buy. Execute to plan, very, very important. Um, from executing the plan, we've got the whole stay on the numbers. Um, I've given you access to the calculators. Take the calculators, run them, run them every month, run them every week if you have to. Find out, you know, if it's staying to plan, and then evolve if when needed. Um, sometimes you got to change. Sometimes it's it's jump model two to model three. Sometimes it's simply okay. Here's the deal. Um, I got to evolve. I got to get out of this. I got to get out of model three. I got to go to model four. Um, that's okay if you if you run the numbers and you have a plan and you stay on top of this stuff. You can absolutely do this. Now, another thing that's really important is invest in the tech that lets you stay on top. Now, this is not a, a commercial to pick up my stuff. This is just a simple fact that you got to invest in the tech that lets you stay on top. 
Um, if you're doing web casting, you need a decent, you know, camera. And, um, you know, wish they had better Brad Pitt filters, but it's just the type of thing that you're going to do. If you're doing e-commerce and you want to do affiliates and you want to do couponing and you want to do tracking and you want to take credit cards normally and that kind of thing because you're selling to an audience that doesn't know PayPal, you're going to have to invest in an e-commerce system that makes these types of things possible. Um, maybe it's a better microphone. Maybe your audience doesn't care about a microphone. Whatever it is that lets you stay on top, make sure you invest on this, on you know, that ability to stay on top. Um, report your success. I would love to hear about your success. You know, I got my Facebook pages. Um, if you sign up inside of um, to get the slides, you'll be on the newsletter. You can unsubscribe at any time. Don't worry. And um, love to hear your success. Would love to report on it. You know, I, I, again, I don't know if I'm going to do podcast um, day 2016, but but certainly anybody who has success, um, um, we're going to love to do that. Uh, Kurt Vonnegut of all the words of mice and men, the saddest are it might have been. You know, I've seen a lot of podcasters who have um, had tremendous talent, uh, tremendous ability, uh, tremendous capacity, who who didn't embrace one of these four models, or or, or they embraced the wrong model for who they are, and then uh, the show died not because of passion, not because of content, not because of quality, but because they didn't grab the great model, and I would hate to see any of that happen to you. Um, get a quick report of what we got, and then I'll take as many Q and A's as come in, and and we'll go from there. Uh, podcastmonth.com. Um, it ends this month. It was a thing I did. I will be shutting it down tomorrow. But for those of you who watch um, this tonight or early tomorrow morning, um, go ahead and sign up there and get all the goodies. That was a free goodie every day. A lot of stuff in there. Uh, the book is at Noise Trade today. So you can head out to um, Noise Trade and grab that as an absolute free download if you'd like to do that. Um, that'll be shutting down tomorrow morning as well. Um, if you're catching this in a replay, you can go to grabthebook.com and you can see I usually keep the book pretty cheap. Um, not that complicated at all. Um, podcastcart.com is the email system that I'm using for um, my own e-commerce. It's, it's my platform. It's my system. So I recommend that. Um, if you want to text your email address to 503-360-1554, That'll get you all of the calculators. And of course, I would love to um, have you listening to the podcast report. So that's what we've got there. That's the end of my presentation. I'm going to answer questions and now they're coming from the chat room. And as long as they're uh, clean and good, we should have some fun here. So um, Zen Runner wants to say, what's your feeling about the good old PayPal donate button when asking for money? The old can on the street. Um, it's a legitimate question. And, you know... Let's take a look. Um, SMS opt-in, by the way, is the service that I'm using for uh, the text to email. You know, if we take a look at the old donations, I think patreon.com is the way to do it. Um, and the thing about the donation can is that um, it's, it's lowest common denominator. Um, it associates you with begging. You know, um, I think you can do more. I mean, at the very much, move it from the can on the street to the elegant glass on the piano, you know, for the piano player who plays at the high upscale audience or that type of thing. You know, and again, uh, you know, there's Patreon, there's my numbers. And of course, I showed you earlier, you know, I showed you Patreon Tom Merritt's numbers. And, and you know, Tom's doing uh, Tom's doing quite well on the old uh, model. Now, yes, Patreon gets, a, gets an action of this. But if you're going to do that, I really, really um, recommend that process a lot. Take a look at some more questions here. Um, love the quality of your webcam. Are you still using the Canon Vixia with Blackmagic Mini Studio? Yes, I am, Robert. Um, obviously a fan. Um, I did actually, I did a, um, a Periscope right before I went live with this where I walked through the whole studio. So if you look at um, twitter.com slash Colligan, um, you can find the link to that. I did a catch. Um, that'll be fun. Um, Saturday mornings, when I teach podcasting, I always mention your 27 days system. Do you still believe in that model? Sure. Of course, um, the, these these models work. Um, uh, learn it, do it TV. What do you recommend for e-commerce? Awkward, I have my own e-commerce system. It's called podcastcart.com. Um, it's a private label to one shopping cart system that ran billion, more than a billion dollars through it last year. Huge names you had. Michael Stelzner uses it for, um, for you know his social media marketing events and that type of stuff. They're a tremendous system owned by web.com, publicly traded. Um, this is a version of their platform specifically for podcasters. It's no more expensive, no more cheap than any other of the versions of it. Um, 
I recommend it highly, obviously. It's what I'm running all my stuff through, but more than anything, I, I just recommend an elegant e-commerce system. I think this is really, really, really important. Um, the book is worth buying, a good $3 investment. Thank you, Zen. I hope it's worth more than $3. The idea really, it's funny for, you know, the book, yeah, I got a copy of it here. Um, you know, my goal, I never wanted to be the how to podcast guy. Um, we got guys like Saturday morning media teaching this stuff who are, are, are fabulous, do a much better job. But, but unfortunately what happens is, is, is a lot of people get confused and, and they let the chaos and the insanity get in the way. And, and, you know, you know, the podcasting books become this thick. And, and the funny thing about this, how to podcast book is really, it's just the first 67 pages are my thing. Once you get to, uh, here, boop. The rest of the book, you know, is how others podcast. The rest of the book is just some commentary from some other people. Now, it's good stuff. Interviews with Stelzner, interview with Dumas, interview with um, Gary Leland, um, Amy Porterfield. There's some great stuff in here, but the fact of the matter is it's not that complicated a podcast. So I appreciate that you say the book's worth buying. I do hope that the book is worth more than $3. All right. And go ahead and say that it is worth um, the $3. That would make me feel a lot better. Um, is Facebook necessary to promote your podcast? I just like Facebook, but wonder if it's a necessary evil. Great question. No, it's not necessary. But, you know, a billion people logged onto Facebook, you know, a couple of Mondays ago. A billion people in, in a 24-hour time frame. I'm going to say that again. A billion people. Um, wow. Do you want to be where a billion people are? You know, the shares that are possible from a billion people and the marketing that's possible from a billion people, it's pretty cool. Um, they're mobile. They're uh, moving around. Um, they want content. They're expected to be entertained external to their TV box or their radio. Um, this is a really, really good market to play with. So no, no, it's not necessary. You're not going to die if you don't promote on Facebook. But I'd say it's a pretty song strategy. Um, Daniel Perry, should we call our podcast a podcast or a show? Oh, the age-old question. Here's the deal. I say call it a show. I say call it a show all day long because here's the thing. Two types of people in the world. Those who know what a podcast is and those who don't. Okay? Right? Um, those who know what a podcast is don't care that it's a podcast. They just know they can get it as a podcast. You know, the fact, I know what a podcast is. I don't care if NPR is a podcast or not because I can get it. This American Life. I can get it. Serial. I can get it. I don't care that it's a podcast. The people who don't know what a podcast is, they get confused. You know, my mom to this day. You know, oh, I can't listen to my son's stuff because I can't afford Apple. You know, yes, you can, Mom, and I'd buy you one if you would use it. But the fact of the matter is, um, she, you know, a lot of the world gets confused with the word podcast, so why do that to them? You know, um, NTSC is the format for video here in the United States of America. We never hear anybody talking about, you know, did you watch NTSC? Um, you know, we, you know, did you watch the TV show? So, um Podcast is the platform that gets it there. Yes, it can be a media format if you want it to, but um, I like calling it a show. I like calling it a lot more. Um, and your voice sounds so rich. What mic pickup do you recommend? Great job today. Thank you, Robert. Um, I'm using the Blue Nessie mic. This thing wrote... Um, doop -a -doop -a -doop. I know. Um, I do have the deep voice, so that's part of it. But I love the Blue Nessie mic. That's it. Um, you can get it for 80 bucks right now on Amazon. It's just not that expensive. Um, I recommend it highly. Um, Zen says, yes, worth way more. It's on sale for $2.99 on Kindle. Yes, it is on sale. Um, I'm, I'm glad that it's worth way more. Um, the podcast book, I'm, I'm thrilled with it. And hey, Zen, if you haven't put up a, a um, you know, by the way, the book has a whole thing where you can register it. And when I do the 2016 book, everybody who registers it is going to get a chance to get the 2016 book at a very, very good price. And of course, Zen, um, I expect to see a review on Amazon if it's not already there from you for the book. Uh, because the more reviews we do, the better off we do there. Um, ben, I'm thrilled with seeing chat next to this video. It's way better than webinar that only allows a viewer to see his own comment. Yes, um, this is a test. This is the first time I've done this. Uh, the thing that could go south here is somebody could uh, type in something inappropriate, but that tends not to be my audience. And um, I'm thrilled that that tends not to be my audience, but this is a lot of fun. And it lets us stay inside of YouTube. There's all these people who are playing all these different games when it comes to um, chat and web systems and that kind of stuff. And the fact of the matter is, um, I think it's much better when we stay inside of YouTube. It's really, really, really easy. Well, hey, it's near the top of the hour. Um, I'll answer a few more questions. We'll go through this one more time. Podcast month is the list of free gifts. The books at Noise Trade today, I'm going to take it off tomorrow. Grab the books there all the time. Podcast cards, the email system, 503-360-1554 if you want to get a hold of the calculators and would love to have you subscribe to the podcastreport.com. So that's it, everybody. Thank you so much for this big podcast day event. 
I want you all to have a happy podcast day. I want to get your podcast. I want to hear about the success that you've had uh, from picking one of these four models. So thank you so much, everybody. Have a great and fabulous day. Bye.